Ahsoka, the 2023 Star Wars Disney Plus show review. Um, this is possibly only season one of more to come, but if there are more seasons and I feel something in them requires, you know, makes sense for me to make another video, I will make it after those have, yeah, at the conclusion of those. And yeah, I'm myself by telling you this was a show that I loved. This video will have some jokes. I will get into some serious topics. I realize that there is long. I'm gonna do what I can to make it worth your time. This video is a review where if you know, I almost definitely won't spoil anything other than Star Wars leading up to it. If I decide to do so, I will verbally warn before I spoil anything of the show. Hold up an index finger until I'm done with spoilers. You can mute and skip ahead until you see me lower my index finger. And yeah, if you want my spoilerful thoughts on individual episodes, the link to them will be in the description box. The top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the SAG After Strikers, and I employ you to do so. And then there's some links to videos to help explain why this is such an important strike. So let's dive in. So I have watched every episode of the, all, all eight episodes once each and I record this right after finishing my video on the eighth episode so it is very fresh in my mind and yeah uh, this picks up after that episode in season two of the Mandalorian where Ahsoka captures Morgan Elsbeth and yeah, I, I don't know, I guess suddenly Star Wars travel is extremely slow because that was like a while ago in, in the timeline and this is supposed to take place during season three of The Mandalorian. Anyway, and yeah, um, some... Some people with Jedi-like powers who insist that they aren't Jedi free Morgan, and this may lead to the re-emergence of an old enemy. Now, the the pilot is quite good. You get a sense of what the show is going to be like, what characters you know, are going to be in it and what their interpersonal relationships are going to be like. Not all of them are the same as last we saw them. And the, you know, the, yeah, the, the more prominent ones are not quite what we saw, what they were last time we saw them. The finale is also quite good. I'm not going to be spoiling it, but I know some people have mixed feelings on it. And I, I understand why. I do think it is one of the stronger uh, Star Wars show finales. And... Yeah. Uh, the show is highly cinematic. Uh, lightsaber battles tend to resemble the original trilogy more than the prequels. Uh, you know, smaller scale, less showy and acrobatic. It feels distinctly like the old samurai movies. That Lucas took inspiration from for the original trilogy. There will be conversations leading into fights instead of people just immediately attacking each other or just only taunting each other as was often the case in the prequel movies. It, it's not not for every single fight but for a number of them. And let's see. Yeah and and yeah, so, you know, the, the lightsaber action is not like the animated series that take place during the prequels. And lightsaber fights are very carefully done. They move slower, and it's very clear that they're trying to finish the fight as quickly as possible, which real-life sword fighters will tell you is the way to go, because the longer it takes, the greater risk that you die. And, you know, fights are won by taking advantage of the other person's strategy, holes in their defense and such not by especially spectacular moves and 
most of the time the characters, places, props, animals and such that this translates from animated shows, though toned down, look quite good in live action and you know, they they barely toned down Chopper at all, thankfully. That character would be extremely boring if they did and, you know, he doesn't get to show off his personality very much in his brief appearance in Rogue One. You know, I I watched Rebels after watching Rogue One, and at no point was I like, oh, that droid, that was in Rogue One, because I didn't even, you know, it made no impression on me in that movie. The character writing maintains continuity, everyone behaves in character, and this show helps explain the rise of the First Order, which is great, because one of the biggest problems with the sequel trilogy is how little is that, you know, that is explained. You know, how could things go from Return of the Jedi to The Force Awakens, from the Empire being completely defeated militarily, to the First Order seemingly being as strong as the Empire was at its peak, even though it's set in the same galaxy and there's, you know, democracy and military in between. Some of the characters that we've waited since the end of Rebels to see more of, though they are brought back, they're really short shrifted. They don't get the kind of action that we were hoping, which is obviously frustrating. Makes you wonder why they bothered bringing back some of these characters, other than, I guess, the audience goodwill, hoping we stick around after. This is the most classic Star Wars thing we've gotten in a long time. Star Wars has had strong female characters from the very start. It's kind of wild it's taken this long for an official Star Wars live action production to have this many women in the main cast. Some of the animated ones do okay. But at least it has finally happened. At least once. Hopefully this is just the first of many. And the, the female characters on this are all very compelling characters. That is something that, you know, since strong female character is almost like a punchline at this point because there's not enough variety in the ones that we get which has led some people to falsely claim I'm not sure they believe it but claim that it is impossible to make a strong female character also be compelling and the show does what it can to combat that stereotype and I th yeah so Rosario Dawson returns as Ahsoka Tano, and she, you know, she obviously gets a lot more screen time here than she has in the past in her guest appearances on Mandalorian and the Book of Boba Fett, and, you know, it's not a surprise that Rosario Dawson can handle it. She's, you know, she's great. She's very, very talented. She has some personal issues that, you know, not a fan of her transphobia, but she is a very talented actress, and the writing gives her a lot to, to work with. Didn't need to see her cross her arms as much as she does in this, but it's, you know, we, we, we get through it. Natasha Lou Bordizzo plays Sabine Wren. And, yeah, she does a, a good job with the character. You know, she is still, she has this sort of stoic thing going still. It does not get, you know, do as much with her, like, artistic side as Rebels did, but I'm not sure that they could do much more than they do. We also have Mary Elizabeth Winstead as Hira Sindula, and yeah, great to see the character again. Never unhappy to see Mary Elizabeth Winstead in something, and yeah, I I wish she had been more. I, I don't think she gets to do as much as, uh, you know, had I had hoped. Ray Stevenson, R.I.P., plays Balin Skull, and he is a very compelling character. You know, Star Wars has long been able to deliver really compelling villains 
that are interesting, not just pure evil. And yeah, Balin is, you know, he has a number of lines that explain why he sees the world the way he does. And you completely understand, you know, we, we don't approve of what he's doing, but we completely understand it. And just, yeah, he's, he's so much more interesting. Like, essentially, the, if, if, if you look completely superficially at it, it is this thing of, you know, he has Jedi traits, but he insists he is not a Jedi. You know, that's... That on its face is already potentially interesting, but there's so much more. And and Stevenson, you know, we, we really lost a massive talent there. Just a lot of the time, it's just... It's the way he delivers a line and, and like his facial expression. Sometimes he's silent, but it's just the face. And it adds so much more than, than could be for the character. Ivana Sakno plays Shinhati, Balin's apprentice. I will grant I was not 100% on board with her character from right away. But over the course of the show, I really, really got into... Yeah and and the the yeah she's she's a very compelling character Diana Le Inosanto returns as Morgan Elsbeth and with more screen time she's able to really deliver you know the yeah Inosanto was inspired by Julius Caesar and Catherine the Great for her portrayal and it really shows David Tennant returns to voice Hu Yang, and yeah, um, I, I just, does anybody on the internet still need to say the words David Tennant is a brilliant actor? I I feel like we all know this by now. Um, that's yeah, he he does fantastic as he you know always does. So just yeah. Um, he, the, the, the droid has this very sarcastic streak, which I quite enjoyed. He's, he is not very forgiving of people who don't live up to, to the Jedi. You know, they, they have a very high standard. Eman Esfandi plays Ezra Bridger. And the... Yeah, he, he feels like the, the character on Rebels, and there are some interesting, yeah, there's some, there's some things that you may not have seen coming from him. Evan Witten plays Jason Sindula. Not gonna lie, I have absolutely no problem with the, the kid. I think he does perfectly fine with what he's given. I did not think the character was super interesting. It's not that he's like, a kid and he's not like super annoying uh, you know which you know sometimes kids on Star Wars are infamously and uh, yeah I don't blame Jake Lloyd I you know he did what George asked him to but yeah uh, I f I don't think that they really made as good use of the, the character as could. Genevieve O'Reilly returns as Mon Mothma, and yeah, she nails it as always. And I, th I suppose it. I will just say that the. The central antagonist of the show, at least the, the first season, is deeply compelling and incredibly well acted. And yeah, there are a couple of other returning characters from other recent Star Wars stuff. And. Yes, I'll I'll say that there's one actor who 
plays in live action a character that he also did the voice for in an animated thing that was Star Wars. And yeah, he absolutely nails it. Like, we already knew he could do the voice aspect, but he also, the, the physical aspect is also spot on. And let's see. Yeah, there is uh, f there's there's exploration of fascism and other philosophical issues. There is uh, mythology, which you know if you've seen any of Dave Filoni's animated shows, you know he he is the creator of this show as well. He's big on you know exploring lore and and mythology and. Jesse Gender said she didn't feel like he did quite as much as she would have liked to see, but you know, and and yeah, I I completely see where she's coming from. The so so yeah, I already mentioned that it's very cinematic. This is both in the cinematography and editing. This feels like a prolonged movie, you know, so so closer to something like. I mean, visually, so closer to something like The Mandalorian and less like the more TV feel of stuff like Obi-Wan Kenobi and The Book of Boba Fett. But but yeah, you know, uh, Lando, the Andor was also cinematic. I'm, I'm hoping Lando will be cinematic as well. Andor was also very cinematic. The special effects are quite good. Overall, there is a slight over-reliance on the volume, as has been the case with each of these Disney... Pl maybe, not, uh, maybe not Andor. I think Andor might be the one of these that has managed to escape that. But the, the, the CG is, is quite good and doesn't feel overused like some Star Wars goes overboard on just having really cool visuals. This is not one of those. The, the ones there are are great, but it doesn't rely too heavily on them. And there are some great practical effects, including creatures, you know, as we want from Star Wars. There's some really great stunt work, such as the for example, the um, can't believe I'm blanking on the word. The the lightsaber fights and the action in general is very well handled. And it also does pretty well at delivering the the different kinds of action that we want from something Star Wars. Uh, in addition to lightsaber. You know, there's people shooting at each other. There are, you know, groups of of people who have weapons fighting. And the, you know, yeah, chases on foot and in vehicles, space battles and space, you know, I suppose, yeah, chases and the like. The music is excellent, very, very distinct, and yeah, occasionally the show does actually get very intense and, you know, not like scary, scary, but Star Wars scary, the, the kind of, yeah, the sound design is incredible, everything has a real presence when it comes to the ah, what's the word the the sound side sound aspect and the episodes are often around 40 minutes I yeah so some are slightly longer some are shorter you know, yeah, some are, are 50 ish minutes, some are just short of, of 40 minutes. So, you know, if, if you haven't watched a single episode yet, you can knock it out pretty quickly, you know. 
yeah, not that many hours of watching. And yeah, um, the best elements of the show are the the way it approaches. You know, I'm I'm really really glad that it doesn't try to do the Star Wars prequel thing, which you know you could understand if they made that choice, since it is the the a lot of the major characters in this show originated in stuff that was set during or slightly after the the prequel trilogy you know more yeah cer certainly not like sequel trilogy and somewhat I forget is no I guess it is like f closer to the original trilogy than the prequel trilogy because it's like 15 years after and there were 20 years between the prequels and the original trilogy but yeah even so yeah um, and the yeah the exploration of fascism which is one of the biggest threats today is the rise of fascism and yeah just the the action the acting the casting and yeah, um, the worst aspect, and I don't think this is a big deal, I would say at least one episode does feel slightly padded, and there's definitely a little bit of pandering going on. Um, a character shows up that we're already predisposed to dislike from other Star Wars sh stuff, and he's made very unlikable. There's some cameos from beloved Star Wars characters, and, you know... You can practically feel like the show, like, you know, just just holding its breath like, oh, here it comes, here's the big, you know, that's not necessary, but it's not that big a deal. It doesn't ruin the show. And, let's see, yeah, I, I had been worried that it would be too pandery, and it is not, and, yeah. You know, I was really looking forward to more that's set after the original trilogy, before the sequel trilogy, and this exceeds my expectations. The, yeah, I already mentioned that the season opener and finale are great. The overall season is also great. I love all eight episodes, though one of them I don't love quite as much as the others. The trailer does give at least a little bit too much away, but it also doesn't, like, completely spoil it and ruin it for you. And the cover and poster do not... Well, let's see, the, ma the main one at least doesn't. I don't think I have looked carefully at the... Yeah, the, they're, uh, they're fine. They don't spoil. And the... Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I would say they're worth, like, looking up. A lot of character posters, but, you know, they're they're... They do a, a decent enough job giving you a sense of what the show is like, which I don't think I mentioned that the trailer also very much does. So, on Rotten Tomatoes, this has an 87% average from critics, a 72% average from audiences. And this is based on 200... Uh, Okay, uh, one counter says 248 reviews, another says 23, but anyway, yeah, the, 20, the 23, uh, apparently what it was, okay, the 23 come out to 74%, but that is still certified fresh, 17 fresh, 6 rotten, and so the... Yeah. Uh, so one of the critic, one one of the rotten critic reviews says that it's not really going anywhere. Same as the other Disney Plus Star Wars shows. Uh, another says it's just lifeless and shockingly incompetent. So that I don't agree with that at all. 
but it is true that it's they they do really need to Disney need to to get back into to propelling well, back into they need to get to propelling I I don't hate Disney Star Wars I think most of it is good a little of it is outright great there's very little of it that I think is just like average like I didn't love Resistance for example but they really do gotta gotta get to a point where they can be propelling stuff forward and let's see yeah another rotten says you know traffic's in nostalgia nostalgia for something is this yeah he's not as familiar with which is as close to an original idea as can be hoped for in a Disney Plus series I don't know I feel like Andor has original ideas anyway the 72 from audiences are based on 25 over 2500 ratings and an average rating of 3.8 out of 5 and when we look to Metacritic it has an it has a 68 from critics based on 25 critic reviews 68% positive eight percent it's that thirty eight percent thirty two percent mixed and none of them negative the user ratings come out to four point seven out of ten mixed or average forty six percent negative thirty nine percent positive fifteen percent mixed and yeah uh, I think that is I I would not go that hard on it and yeah so the negative ones uh, okay this does not make any sense to me yes okay um so one says the acting is atrocious, which I don't. I wish they would give at least one example. They just uh, say some side characters. I, I have no, I don't, I can't think of a side character that I thought was like that badly acted. And one person does the classic not a review review where they just say this is bad and say that anything over three stars is generous without explaining why they think so uh, let's see the yeah some of them are just hating the fact that there's a lot of women and Yeah, w one person says, you know, like everything out of Star Wars, after 1983, it's just the same scenes and plot devices over and over and over. I really hope that Disney is able to address that. Uh, let's see. Okay, one person gave it a 0 out of 10, says it's basically a continuation of Rebels with more Ahsoka in it. So I guess they didn't like Rebels. I don't know why they thought this wouldn't be a continuation. Like, a huge chunk of the characters are directly from Rebels. Did not appear in Clone Wars. Haven't appeared in anything other than Rebels before this. Ooh, one person says it's culturally Marxist, so mark that off if you're playing stupid conservative hating leftist media bingo. And one person says Miss Sandry, so that's yeah, we're we're working our way towards a bingo here. And let's see. <laughs> one person says, you know, oh, the injection of woke in quotes, scare quotes. Themes such as feminism and anti-establishment sentiments is a clear departure from the franchise's earlier focus. No, no it isn't. That was always a theme. Just ask George... 
I wish I was making movies on the Soviet Union, Lucas. Seriously, he did say that. And having watched a few of the movies from there, I don't blame him. And... One person says that the, tar the target audience must be teenagers. I... Somewhat, maybe, but no more so than... You know, I mean... That's that's kind of Star Wars at least recently, and and you know George Lucas said he made he made the movies for twelve year olds so I don't know what you're expecting, and yeah one person straight up says it's made for kids hard disagree one hundred percent disagreed on that, and. Yeah, some person, some some don't think the action is good, which just is completely absurd. I'm sure someone has a bingo now. Star Wars is simply not the same anymore. Like you're fine to think that, but it's something a lot of conservative, like if you're a conservative and you love at least some Star Wars, that's fine. But you gotta admit, Star Wars was never made for you. Like, maybe you think that the original Star Wars was not really, really hard left because you were, like, a child and or you did not have media literacy at the time. Some of them still don't. So you didn't realize how hard left it is, but it's, like, literally saying America was the bad guys during the Vietnam War. That was very hard left then, still is. Let's see, you know, yeah, there are some different themes and ideas here, but the the political leaning has not, you know, it's if anything, it's gone further. It's it's more centrist now, where it used to be very very hard left. One person says that the the three female Jedi are gender fluid. I have no. I don't think that person knows what that word means. Let's see. The, I mean, sure, there's some masculinity to them, but no more than, like, female action heroes have been asked to be masculine for decades, and that's not a feminist thing. That's, it's not, certainly it's not a, what feminists today are calling for. And one person says two moms, as if that's supposed to be an insult. Yeah, I'm certain someone has bingo at this point. Um, okay, I don't... Yeah, look. I've read, like, 15 by now of the negative reviews. They're giving me nothing to work with. I'm gonna stop. You know, if, if you're someone who thinks there's a lot to criticize about this show, your issue is with the people clogging up the yeah with with a lot of really bad nonsense yeah anyway um and you know i didn't read every single word of the ones that i read but i didn't get very far before they said something ridiculous and just yeah let's see which i i mean on on some level i kind of appreciate that they're not wasting my time they they immediately say I will have nothing of interest to say. If, if you think it's an insult to say that a Star Wars thing has a lot of women in it or is very leftist, yeah, I, you know, get media literacy. And yeah, so on IMDb, there are a total of 606 reviews or 455 if you hide spoilers. 28.4% gave it a 10 out of 10. 28.8 gave it an 8. 20.5 gave it a 9. So yeah, very positively received. It's, yeah, it, it, you know, it delivered what a lot of people wanted from this exact thing. And, uh, right, I've, yeah, it has a 7.9 out of 10 based on 59,000 votes total. 
5.1% gave it 6, another 5.1% gave it 1, which is, just, I, I don't know how you rate this lower than 5, but whatever. 3.1% gave, well, I know, I just don't think they're making a lot of sense. 3.1% gave it 5, 2.1% gave it 2, 2.0% gave it 4, 1.9% gave it 3 out of 10. And... Yeah, um, I rate this 8 Compelling Former Jedi out of 10. The 4 to have reached higher, I think if they had made it 6 episodes instead of 8, you know, it would have been tighter. The And I, I think some of the pandering which you know it's been a problem with Disney Star Wars from the start I think it would be great if they really managed to to move past that but yeah um, so yeah this has you know as I mentioned this has very much at least on IMDb very much found its audience I wouldn't rule out it might be even more appreciated in the future. And yeah, um, the the Disney Plus Star Wars shows ranked worst to best. The Book of Boba Fett, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and from here on out, the ones I love. Mandalorian Season 1, 2, and 3, Ahsoka, and Andor Season 1. Yeah, I this did not top and or season one that is I, I maybe and or season two can top and or season one I'm not sure anything else is very likely to that's that's Disney plus Star Wars in in recent so that's it for this video uh, let me know what are your hopes for the future of Disney Star Wars if you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page, one, two or more links to stuff like relevant playlists. I suggest that video for you to watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiled thoughts on a movie. I also do a weekly one talking about a Star Wars thing, which this week is this. Um, starting next week, I am going to do one week, to, you know, one week I'll do a, an episode of Star Wars Vintage Droids, and the week after it'll be an episode of Star Wars Vintage Ewoks, week after that back to Droids. I also do a weekly video talking about the most recent episode I've personally gotten around to watching of a horror show, which this week is Scream Queens, which I have now watched all of. Starting next week it will be Blood Curse. And I try to do... do right, and, and yeah... Um, this week, f I will finish off Season 2 of The Bear. Uh, might be like Sunday. And uh, I try to do a daily vlog where I talk about the most recent episode I've gotten around to watching of a Marvel TV show. Other than the net TV or streaming show, other than the Marvel Netflix ones, which I did already do and I am currently uh, early in season two of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and I'm doing all the shows in the order well I'm doing all the MCU ones in the order they aired and then I'll do the X-Men ones after I'm done with the MCU ones and recently the Ruin Thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one but with the thoughts in the same videos instead of in a separate video since its running time is significantly shorter than a show. In other words, if more videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog. This was Cashman next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording. I'll catch you next time. May the Force live long and prosper.